Do you ever start watching an anime that the larger community seems to think is complete garbage and find yourself immediately loving it from the very first episode and think to yourself, am I watching the same show? What's the fucking problem here? Because that's what I experienced with one of the community's biggest punching bags of last year, Ari Ferretta from Commonplace to World's Strongest. It's a show that from the very first episode I saw almost no praise for, despite the fact that I had, in my opinion, the best of all of the premiere episodes I watched from that season. And I watch most of them, because that's the thing I like to do every season, for some reason. Fans of the original light novels criticised the anime for not being a good adaptation, due to the series cutting out supposedly important events and breaking the pace with confusing flashbacks. Meanwhile, most anime only is majorly how of the likes of Oh Boy, Generic Trashy Isekai Cash Grab of the Season, and other lazy and tired criticisms that you've no doubt seen floating around the community at the dawn of every new season especially when there's a new isekai show. And if it wasn't already clear, I don't really agree with either of these assessments. From what I've heard, the anime does skip some of the early material from the novels, but as an anime-only viewer, I never felt like anything was missing or confusing. I never once asked myself, WHAT'S GOING ON ME? But I haven't read the novels, and I don't plan to, because I don't really read things that aren't manga or anime subtitles. Maybe there's an even better version of this already incredible story in those that I haven't been fortunate enough to experience. And I'm not really here to talk about how good of an adaptation of the light novels Ari Ferretta is, but rather how it's anything but your generic, trashy, seasonal isekai anime. Not that those really exist to begin with, because despite how saturated the genre is, I actually find that isekai is one of the more varied ones in the media. It's always trying something new or doing something interesting. It hasn't quite gotten tired yet, and it probably won't for a long time if recent shows like this, Shield Hero and Slime Isekai are anything to go by, but... That's a whole other video for another time. Now at first glance, sure, Ari Ferretta definitely comes across as your standard isekai fair. A bunch of high school students get summoned to a fantasy world, they get given special job classes and powers from the gods, and they're tasked with saving the world from an evil force. But what makes Ari Ferretta stand out from the crowd is how the series handles his main protagonist, Hajime Nagamo. Hajime is initially portrayed as your average wizard protagonist. Unlike most of his classmates who are given powerful jobs like warrior or mage, he ends up with the synergist class, which isn't really useful in combat, and as such he's viewed as a pain in the arse and a liability more than anything else. Combine this class with the fact that Hajime himself is completely lacking in self-confidence and is extremely timid, he's nothing really special at all. His initial character design even makes him look the part. That's fucking mental, right? But as the full title of the series suggests, this doesn't remain the case for very long, and over the course of the series, particularly the first handful of episodes, Hajime quickly goes from being your average turn protagonist to something much more unique and interesting, especially by isekai standards. The first episode was actually heavily criticised for its brisk pace, throwing the audience right into a major conflict, but I actually feel this helped to better establish Hajime's rightful place as one of anime's best isekai protagonists. Because this first episode more or less focused solely on his character, the struggles he has to overcome after being betrayed by his classmates and falling into the deeper levels of the dungeon, and how overcoming said struggles allows him to grow as an individual. Rather than choosing to focus on establishing things that are already fairly obvious, like the isekai setting, or heroes being isekai and needing to save the world, or Hajime being ostracised by his fellow classmates, we instead get a more detailed look into Hajime himself, his growth as a protagonist, and how his personality slowly changes over time. Left to fend for himself with nothing but his limited abilities, no resources, and trapped in a den teeming with powerful monsters way beyond his combat ability, Hajime is forced to think on his feet to survive. He swallows his cowardice and strategically takes down a powerful monster, consuming its flesh as food to sustain himself, and these events slowly begin to change Hajime, both internally and externally. Devouring the monster grants him new abilities, while also gradually changing his personality, the act of doing so having a negative effect on his psyche due to the meat being poisonous. And his physical appearance also changes drastically, as even the meat alters his biology. He then begins to systematically take down more monsters and consume them, making him less and less human and more battle-hardened, while also increasing his repertoire of skills and making him more powerful. Personality change aside, it's honestly not all that different from Slimey Sakai's first episode, which has Romero gradually increase his power for devouring different monsters to acquire new skills and abilities. Yet, Romero's character was universally praised by the larger community, while Hajime's was not. Really makes you wonder if people actually pay attention to the shows they watch, doesn't it? Hajime also eventually uses his synergist ability to transmute the materials around him into guns, which become his primary weapon of use. 
He's not only served as a unique method of combat compared to your average isekai protagonist, but I also took him as being symbolic of Hajime's changed morals, given how the Japanese view firearm usage and gun ownership as taboo concepts. Hajime is initially timid and good-natured, but after being betrayed and abandoned by his peers and going through the changes that occur within him as a result of the events in the lower levels, he becomes a lot more cold and self-centered, isolation taking its toll on him. I've seen some people criticise this new personality as overly edgy and inconsistent, but I honestly don't see how anyone could ever think that's the case. He's definitely a darker and more brooding protagonist compared to most shows in the genre, but edgy? Can it really be considered edgy if there's a legitimate narrative reason for why he acts the way he does? Despite what you'd be led to believe based on what's typical of the genre, you'd assume that Hajime's ultimate goal after all of this would be to reunite with his classmates, snuff out the crater and rejoin the group in their quest to save the world. But the story instead has him completely abandon this idea, with his primary motivation being that he simply wants to go back home. Hajime feels let down by his peers and he has absolutely no interest in reuniting with them and he's even less interested in the world we've been tasked with saving. He doesn't even really care about who the traitor is or getting revenge on them or anything like that, and this motivation is one of the main reasons why I consider him to be such an interesting protagonist. He actively rejects the world and his place in it, casting aside the destiny that the gods had planned out for him and instead chooses to carve out his own paths. He's self-motivated and acts in his own self-interests, and this more or less remains consistent throughout the entire series, outside of the bonds he forms with the characters who join him along the way, particularly Yui. And while we're on that subject, there's another criticism I've seen tossed about regarding Hajime and the series as a whole, and it's sillier than Davi Vanity's mad rad hair. Hajime is just a boring edgelord protagonist with a harem. Mm. <sighs> I'm sick of this shit. I'm gonna cut to the chase here. Hajime doesn't have a harem. You fucking own a bit! Yes, he has several female companions who have the hearts for him and care for him deeply. But if you actually watch the show and pay attention to what's fucking going on, you've noticed that Hajime himself isn't actually receptive to any of the romantic feelings aside from Yui. Because Yui is a special someone and the only person he truly trusted ever since, and this is made abundantly clear pretty early on into the relationship. Like, seriously, I don't understand how anyone could ever think otherwise. A show having a lot of female characters doesn't automatically make it a harem. A harem is only really a harem if the main character has a romantic interest in more than one of the girls. Yet for some reason, people have this really daft idea that if the main character is surrounded by females, regardless of their own feelings, that he has a harem. If the protagonist has already made up their mind about who they want to be with and only have eyes for one of the girls, then it isn't a harem. The struggle to choose element is a key part of what makes a harem, well, a harem. And without that element, it can't really be considered one. I mean, are we seriously going to say that Sword Art Online Army of the Summer is a harem because Kyoto is surrounded by multiple female characters, despite the fact that he confesses his love to Asuna and marries her midway through the first story? Oh. Oh no. I forgot. People will do that all the time. They always say that Sword Art Online is a harem, sure. Oh. Oh no. Better get back to writing that in-depth retrospective of Sword Art Online, eh? The point I'm making is that Hajime only has feelings for Yui, and the relationship is one of the strongest parts of both Hajime's character arc and the series as a whole. Hajime views Yui as a kindred spirit, someone who, like him, was alone, left to fend for herself and was isolated for a long time. Hajime rescues her from her imprisonment, seeing her as someone whose loneliness he can relate to, and the two of them form an unbreakable bond from there on out, being willing to do anything to protect one another. The two even consummate the relationship by spending the night together off screen. And this is actually a fact that many people seem to have completely overlooked due to the fact that it was mentioned offhandedly in a casual conversation. Through Yui, Hajime is able to find a connection in this new world, a world where he was betrayed and left to die. And seeing the two of them play off of one another is one of the series' highlights. A harem? Please. The final episode of the anime also does a fantastic job in showcasing Hajime's growth as a character by having him swoop in to save his former companions from an incredibly powerful demon. With his newfound abilities and vast amount of combat experience, he manages to take down the demon with relative ease, something the classmates who previously saw him as a burden were unable to do themselves. And honestly, it's one of the most satisfying moments I've ever seen in anime. By the end of this first season, there's a second season coming, Hajime really has gone from commonplace to the world's strongest, and likewise has gone from being your average protagonist to one of the best in the isekai subgenre. Ari Furetta is a series that means a hell of a lot to me, easily one of my all-time favourite anime, so I decided to make this video in hopes of providing a more positive perspective on the series. I hope that even if you disliked the series that I was at least able to provide some insight into why I enjoyed it, and why Hajime's art was a big part of that enjoyment. If you liked this video and would be interested in hearing some more praise for Ari Furetta, 
One of my closest friends, Velrix, has also made a video in the series last year that covers the series as a whole and analyzes it from a much more broader perspective. In fact, it was this very video that convinced me to check out the series to begin with, in spite of all the negative talk I'd seen about it. And you know what? Give her a sub while you're at it. She makes some really great content. And if you're a fan of Isekai especially, you'll definitely find her channel worth keeping up with. Especially right now, she's going on a bit of an Isekai marathon, covering shows that not a lot of Anitubers have talked about at length. So yeah, give her a sub, check out her video, links will be in the description. As for myself, I'd love to hear your thoughts on our threat, and Hajime or anything else regarding the series. Feel free to leave your own conclusions about the series in the comments. Let's get our discussion going. It's always fun to throw ideas back and forth and have a chat. I've been left, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.